السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهداه وبعد All praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى complete blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless him and to bless every single one of us and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the ability to utilize these powerful nights of the month of Ramadan. The last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan are very different from the first 20 nights of the month of Ramadan. They have within them one night which is more valuable than 1,000 months. That is 84 odd years. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who can at least add a few extra acts of worship for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a daily basis. Ameen. <laughs> Gratitude is something that is extremely important and that is the subject we have to discuss tonight inshallah. If someone does something to you, if you do not thank them, they may be upset. And sometimes as human beings, when we do something for someone, human nature at times makes us at least feel that we want them to say, Thank you very much. Oh, Jazakumullahu khaira. May Allah reward you and recompense you. In the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks of gratitude. And he says, the one who is not thankful to people, how is he going to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When a person does something for you, which is material, which you can see, you can notice, they've helped you, they've given you something, they've benefited you in one way or another. And if you cannot be grateful for that, which is in front of you, clear, apparent, then how are you going to be grateful of the Creator who has given you many hidden gifts which sometimes require lots of deep thinking in order to understand? So this is why a sign of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when you start off by thanking those who do things for you directly here in your life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit every single one of us inshallah. And we ask him to make us from those who are gratitude, uh, or from those who are grateful, full of gratitude. And at the same time, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from ingratitude. The reality is, gratefulness and gratitude is not only lip service. It is not only something that is meant to be by tongue and then it stops there. If that is what we think gratitude is, then let's learn something tonight, inshallah. Let's go through the verses of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Many, many different places in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of his great, of, of gratitude and the gifts he's given us and how grateful we are meant to be. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who can take heed. Also, we need to realize that whenever Allah has praised himself or he has asked us to praise him, it is part and parcel of gratitude. To praise by the tongue, praise be to Allah, glory be to Allah, thanks be to Allah, Allah is the greatest. All these words are part and parcel of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why the opening verses of the Quran that we repeat in salah every single raka'ah, we say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All gratitude belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah who is the Lord of the worlds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares that the praise actually belongs to him. He is the owner of praise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us understand that. And the opening verses are such. One of the reasons for that is because we need to realize the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. The biggest gift is the gift of belief and iman. If we, are, if we can believe in our own creator without associating partners with him, that is the biggest gift inshallah and we will come to notice that in tonight's verses. The first thing I'd like to go through is the command where Allah instructs us in some of the verses saying be thankful, don't be ungrateful, be thankful. Listen to the verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnaakum washkuru lillahi in kuntum iyyahu ta'budun O you who believe eat from the good that we have granted you in terms of sustenance and be thankful to Allah if you worship him alone which means a sign that you worship Allah alone is that you are grateful to Him, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. You realize 
that even if an individual has given you something, it is Allah's acceptance and Allah's permission through which that person has actually helped you and assisted you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Nothing that happens to you or me is mere coincidence. It is the plan of Allah as a test for myself and yourselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who can pass our tests, inshallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter instructs us again in another verse of Surah Al-Baqarah. Remember me and I will remember you. Allah says, if you bear me in mind, I will remember you. I will ease your difficulties. And Allah says, and be thankful and do not be ungrateful. That's an instruction, a command and a prohibition in one. The command and instruction to be thankful for all of us and the prohibition to be ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should never ever be from amongst those who are ungrateful and who show ingratitude. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. He tells us, I have created man. The fact that you are living is a gift. You need to be grateful for that. The fact that you have life is a gift. It gives you an opportunity to earn rewards to get to heaven or to earn the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to earn forgiveness. The fact that you are alive, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, be grateful for that. Look what he says in Surah Ad-Dahr. He says, we have created people and there are two types. They fall into two categories when it comes to gratitude. There are those who are grateful and those who are ungrateful. There are those who accept and those who deny. People fall into two categories. Allah says we have guided them the path. They are either grateful or they are either ungrateful. Kafur. Notice the term ingratitude is very close to the term disbelief. If you say kafara, it would mean a person who has disbelieved or to disbelieve. And it would also mean to be ungrateful because a disbeliever is in fact very ungrateful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from ingratitude. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says part of gratitude is to believe because the opposite of kufr is iman. The opposite of disbelief is iman and the opposite of ingratitude is definitely shukr and part of shukr is to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is all intertwined. Then Allah continues in Surah Al-Dahr and he says, for those who are ungrateful, for those who disbelieve, for those who reject, for those who, are, who show ingratitude, we have prepared chains and we have prepared a, a painful torment, a punishment, and they will be cast therein. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not punish us. Remember these little du'as that we are making on a daily basis whilst we are speaking are actually not little. They are so powerful that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts even one of them, wallahi we have succeeded. May Allah grant us success. And this is why it is important that whilst we are speaking, if we mention heaven, we should ask Allah to grant it to us. If we mention hell, we should ask Allah to protect us from it. If we mention any good point, we should ask Allah to make us from those who are good. If we mention any bad point or point of evil, we should ask Allah to protect us. That is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So much so that when he used to read verses of the Quran, he used to stop where the punishment was mentioned and say, Ya Allah, protect us from it. Where goodness was mentioned, he used to say, Ya Allah, grant us from it. Where st certain things of belief were mentioned, he used to say, Ya Allah, make us from the true believers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the adoption of the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that I have given man so much, but man definitely is very oppressive and very ungrateful. Listen to what he says in Surah Ibrahim. He says, Wa if you try to count the gifts of Allah upon you, O oh man, you will not be able to do that. Because there are so many gifts that you take for granted. So many things you don't even realize they come from your Creator. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Nay, we have given man so much. But man is oppressive and highly ungrateful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from those who are oppressive, nor should he make us from those who are ungrateful.
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah and in many other places in the Quran, but we will quote the verse of Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah says, Inna Allah ladhu fadlin ala nasi wa lakinna akthara nasi la yashkurun. Allah gives man from his virtue, from the gifts of Allah, from his virtue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he bestows a lot upon man, but man does not thank. Most men are not thankful at all. La yashkurun. The term here that is used is not thankful at all. Allah says most men do not thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May we not be from amongst those. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, that there are so many gifts. This is the month of Ramadan. Do you know that we have gifts in the month of Ramadan? Yes, some might look at the fast as a burden, but wallahi, the benefits that the fast have are so great. They not only create a barrier between ourselves and the punishment of Jahannam, but they help our bodies and they detox our bodies. It is extremely healthy to fast and to abstain from food. Subhanallah. When the doctor tells you to diet, then everybody listens. When Allah tells you not to eat, people start feeling lazy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never make us from those. I think all of us who are here, inshallah, we, we fast for the sake of Allah happily with full belief and conviction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. And the fast is not difficult. Many non-Muslims think we fast for one whole month. If that was the case, we would be dying. We fast on a daily basis from dawn to dusk. That is what we fast for. And yes, then every day we will add to the next day until the month is over. But it doesn't mean we abstain from food and drink for the whole month. I think three days down the line, most of us would be collapsed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So that is a misunderstanding some have. Allah says he has been really granting us a favor by making it easy for us when to eat when not to eat over and above that he says if you are on a journey or if you are sick you don't have to fast you can fast later you can make it up later allah says no you have the option if you are sick if you cannot manage a woman who is breastfeeding for example a woman who is pregnant for example she has the option the option of fasting or not fasting depending on her capacity and capability if someone is sick or traveling depending on the level of the sickness or the journey of the travel and how difficult it is they have the option not to fast they will not be sinful on condition that they make it up outside the month of ramadan and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after that he gives you a day of Eid, a day of happiness after your fast in order to declare the, the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to what he says in Surah Al-Baqarah. وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ You see the word shukr coming into play. Allah says he wants you to complete the prescribed time and he wants you to declare the greatness of Allah on the day of Eid when you are over with the fasting in order that you may be thankful that Allah has granted you a whole month of benefit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit us from the month of Ramadan. May he make us from those who are thankful that he has made easy for us. Imagine for a moment if the sick person had to fast, what would happen? Allahu Akbar. Imagine if you were on journey and you had to fast. A breastfeeding female had to fast. Imagine if that was the case, what would have happened? Allah says, so be thankful to me. I made things easy for you. Allahu Akbar. Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about how easy he has made even when it comes to wudu. A person who is unable to make wudu because they cannot use water for some reason, for some health reason, or a person who does not have water at all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and obviously there are conditions regarding this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I've made it easy for you. You don't have to, you don't have to do it that way. I will show you another way. It is called tayammum. You can use dust or sand and you can actually arrive at the same level of cleansing and the same level of cleanliness as the one who has made wudu. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. And after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in those verses of Surah Al-Ma'idah, He says, ما يريد الله ليجعل عليكم من حرج ولكن يريد ليطهركم وليتم نعمته عليكم لعلكم تشكرون. Allah says He does not intend to make things difficult for you. Here He has shown you ease of how to do tayammum if you don't have water to do wudu or even to do the ghusl. 
to, to take a bath. If you don't have the water, there is another way of arriving at that level of purity in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, I have done this so that you can be thankful that Allah has shown us a way out. Subhanallah. Imagine if a person was regarded as unclean and impure when they didn't have water and there was no way out. What would happen to us? Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to realize the gift of His when it comes to salah. Salah, there is no excuse when it comes to salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us through the Mubarak lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that if you cannot read standing, you read sitting. If you cannot read sitting, you read lying down. Subhanallah. Look at that. Look at the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the ease. Let's thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having made this deen so easy for us. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us regarding the creation of man in Surah Al-A'raf. He says, وَلَقَدْ مَكَّنَّاكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَجَعَلْنَا لَكُمْ فِيهَا مَعَايِشَ قَلِيلًا مَا تَشْكُرُونَ We have actually given you a place on this earth. We have given you authority on this earth. And we have actually given for you sustenance. We have provided for you on this earth. But very few are thankful, Allah says. Allah says, we put you into this earth. We gave you authority. We gave you a position. We gave you provisions. We gave you wealth and sustenance. But Allah says, very few are thankful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who are thankful, inshallah. And another surah, in surah An-Nahl, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاللَّهُ أَخْرَجَكُمْ مِن بُطُونِ أُمَّهَاتِكُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ شَيْئًا وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Allah says, I was the one who removed you from the wombs of your mothers and you didn't know anything at all when you were removed from the wombs of your mothers. Allah says, you knew nothing. We are the ones who gave you the ears, we gave you the sight, we gave you the heart, we gave you all these organs in order that you may be thankful subhanallah let us be grateful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have all these organs that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us let's not become oblivious of the fact that they are actually a gift from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at what he says in surah sajda regarding the hearing and the sight allah says thumma sawahu wa nafakha fihi min ruhihi it is allah who has made man and then blown the ruh or the soul into man. We gave you your sight, we gave you your hearing, we gave you your hearts, but very few are thankful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from those who are ungrateful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to consider the organs He's given us and to thank Allah for that. Imagine the fingers we have. If you remove one thumb, you will suffer so badly. May Allah protect us all. You, it will be so difficult to lift anything up. You need the five fingers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided. And the thumb, as small as it is, is one of the most important fingers that we have. Imagine without a thumb, what would, how would you lift a cup? Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. We cannot do without any one of these fingers. Yes, if one of them is gone, we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recompense such a person and grant them all forms of sabr inshallah, which will be our topic for tomorrow inshallah. But at the same time, today we are speaking of the gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What he has given you, be thankful. If you have one eye, thank Allah for that because others don't even have one. If you have one leg, thank Allah for that because others don't even have one. Allahu Akbar. We need to be very, very conscious of what Allah has given us because we will see a little bit later what happens to those who are ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Mu'minun, in many places He reminds us of our organs. He says, وَهُوَ الَّذِي أَنشَأَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةِ It is Allah. Who has given you your eyesight, your hearing, your hearts, your body organs in order that you may be thankful. Let us be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us thereafter regarding the gift of the day and the night. And the fact that Allah has created it, we need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given us day and night. As we are speaking here, there are certain Muslims in Europe who are fasting for a very long prolonged period surely for about 14 to 18 hours of the day because the sun there rises very early and sets very late 
at this moment of the year subhanallah shouldn't we be thankful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this part of the world that amazingly our days and nights are more or less equal throughout the year subhanallah we have an hour two hours difference subhana rabbi al-a'la we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to be grateful to him i am not saying those in europe should not be grateful at least they have a day and a night there are positives and negatives for everything when your day is long sometimes you can achieve much more and when your nights are long also sometimes you can achieve much more in terms of the ibadah and closeness to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-furqan remember everything i am mentioning here it is connected to gratitude and thankfulness to allah and within the same verse or before it or after it allah speaks of gratefulness gratitude praise of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the gifts he has bestowed upon us he says in Surah Al-Furqan, وَهُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ خِلْفَةً لِمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَذَّكَّرُ أَوْ أَرَادَ شُكُورًا If anyone wants to, remind, to be reminded, anyone wants to be from amongst those who remembers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, It is He who has created the night and the day following one another. They follow and rotate. Imagine if the day came, then suddenly the night was on strike and the day had to come again. Allahu Akbar. Or there was a gap. One wonders how that gap would be. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Just as well, none of the other creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala go on strike. Because had they been on strike, one wonders how, what would have happened and how we would have actually managed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. The post office goes on strike. We suffer. Subhanallah, other people go on strike, we suffer. We go on strike, we suffer. But we don't realize that it's Allah's gift upon us. That inshallah, we have been given so many gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They just continue ticking and clicking. They never ask for increase in salary. They never ask for anything, subhanallah. The day and the night, all Allah wants from us is gratitude. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who are grateful for granting us the day and the night. For granting us the day and the night that moves one after the other. Allah says, for those who want to be thankful, that is a sign for them. Allahu Akbar. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Qasas, wa min rahmatihi, from the mercy of Allah. He says, it is from the mercy of Allah. جَعَلَ لَكُمُ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ لِتَسْكُنُوا فِيهِ وَلِتَبْتَغُوا مِن فَضْلِهِ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ it is the mercy of Allah and it is in order that you may be thankful that he has created the night in which you can sleep and the day in which you can go out and work. That is the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why in Islam we need to realize it is the duty of a Muslim to, to sleep at night and to work during the day as best as they can. Also we use a portion of the night to engage in acts of worship that will be pleasing the creator. But if we are doing nothing meaningful after Salatul Isha, we should find ourselves in bed. Because the night has been created to rest. Those who want to stay awake at night without doing anything meaningful, that is the time the devil comes out. Let me inform you very openly that 99% of the sins are committed at night. So if you would like to achieve any form of goodness, find yourself indoors immediately after Salatul Isha. And inshallah, you will be protected from the night clubs. I don't know of any club that is called a day club. Allahu Akbar. Because at night is when the sins happen. The adultery happens. The, the drugs happen. And all forms of different crimes happen at night. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So that is why it is a gift of Allah. Realize that it is there in order to rest as much as we can. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us increase. A person who goes early to bed definitely quenches the, their, their thirst of sleep than a person who goes late to bed. So to go early to bed and to get up early is a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is his practice and he asks us to follow that path. Because that is the person who will definitely get up and breathe the morning oxygen that is so beneficial for you. Amazingly, we don't understand and realize that Allah wants us to get up very early before everybody else to pray so that we can benefit from the oxygen that is there uncontaminated through the night, specially kept for the Muslimin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us benefit. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the cattle in Surah Yasin. Allah says, do you know the cattle? We take it for granted. But that cow that we see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there is so much benefit in it for you. You will benefit from its skin, from its meat, from the milk therefrom. You will benefit in so many different ways. 
do you know that the cow is so so much full of wealth for the one who owns it the person will earn from the offals he will earn from the trotters he will earn from the horns he will earn from the from everything from the meat and the most money that he will ever get is from the skin if only he knows what to do with it allahu akbar we take it for granted but ask those who know what wet blue is they will tell you subhanallah we would like to see this skin and we want you when you cut it cut it nicely don't make a hole in the center because it needs to be taken to italy and back so that people can say it's italian leather yet it was from south africa all we did is we took it by ship there as it docked it came back with new papers allahu akbar may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us we don't want to fall into the deception of the world though we might know what is going on so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in surah yaseen وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا مَنَافِعُ وَمَشَارِبَ أَفَلَا تَشْكُرُونَ Are you not going to be thankful? We've given you so much benefit in the cattle and so much to drink from it. Subhanallah. This milk, have you ever thought for a moment that almost everyone on the globe drinks milk? Where does it come from? Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Imagine how many cows Allah has in order to create milk for every single human being. And yet we sit and we think, okay, I went and I bought the milk from the shop. Go and see how much milk is being consumed in your own locality. You will get a shock. We'll probably fill hundreds of thousands of liters a day. Allahu Akbar. And where are all those cows? Allah says, are you not thankful? Do you forget that this drink is so pure? It is milk. It is white. It is pure. It is uncontaminated. It is so beneficial. From it, you have your ice creams that I am adding. Subhanallah. From it, you have your chocolate. From it, you have your milkshakes. And from it, you have so many different things. Allah says, be grateful. Come on. Afala tashkurun. Afala yashkurun. Allah says, are they not going to be grateful for what we've given them? And still you find man disobeying the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is only the cattle that we spoke about. It is such a gift. If you were to think about it, it would consume one entire year of yours. Subhanallah. If you had to do a study, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Yaseen again, regarding the fruits and regarding the springs that gush forth, Allah gives us so many different types of fruit. Allah says, what do you do? Your hands don't make the fruit. You only plant the seed. And if you are fortunate living in a country like this in South Africa or Zimbabwe or one of these countries where the soil is so fertile, even if you threw the seed by mistake, Allah will provide you with grapes. Allahu Akbar. Even if you threw the seed by mistake, you will have, mashallah, tomatoes and so on. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Allah says, لِيَأْكُلُوا مِنْ ثَمَرِهِ وَمَا عَمِلَتْهُ أَيْدِيهِمْ أَفَلَا يَشْكُرُونَ They will eat from all the fruit of this world. Allah makes mention of the date. Why the date? Because the date is as sweet as one can imagine. And yet it grows where there is no rain. In the deserts, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. In the heat, how that date grows is amazing. Only Allah knows. And do you know if a date grows in any other place besides the place that has extreme heat, it will not be as sweet. When you put a date of Medina in your mouth, automatically it has a different sweetness to it than the medjool date of wherever it is. Subhanallah. The Ambar of Medina and the 35 or 36 different types of date of dates that we might have subhanallah every one of them has a different taste allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the date because there are so many types of dates the big one the small one the black one the brown one and you know the very sweet one the one which is not extremely sweet the bitter one and so on amazing it's a creation on its own allahu akbar allah says are you not going to be thankful and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the grapes and the raisins and all that we have from the grape and amazingly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And we have let water gush forth in the form of springs for you to benefit from. Allah says, Are they not going to be grateful? No gratitude? Am I getting any gratefulness from them? Amazing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never ever make us from those who transgress. May He really forgive us for the ingratitude we've been showing for years on end. And sometimes, even through our deeds, we are showing ingratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to what he says thereafter. He speaks about water. He speaks about water and he says water is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who sends it down. He is the one who fills the oceans and the seas. 
He is the one who permits the ships to move. Allah says that itself, are you going to be thankful for it? Amazing. The ships that are moving on the sea, that is the power of Allah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not have the sea, were there going to be any ships? And we need the ships no matter whether now we have air transport and all other forms of transport. You and I know that those containers and the oil and what have you, the best way of transporting it is through the oceans. Allahu Akbar. That is the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot do without it. So Allah says, are they not going to be thankful when we have given them water? If we wanted, we could have made that water so salty that they would not be able to drink it. So are they not going to be thankful for the fact that they have drinkable water? Do you know that it is said that the next war on this globe is going to be for water and for food? If you think about it carefully, it seems and sounds extremely accurate and true. Because people are now fighting for access to water across the globe. And people are fighting for drinkable water. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Waqi'ah, لَوْ نَشَاءُ جَعَلْنَاهُ أُجَاجًا فَلَوْ لَا تَشْكُرُونَ If we wanted, we could have made this water very salty. Are they not going to thank us? Are they not going to thank us so that we can provide them with more water, inshallah? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who are grateful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Ankabut regarding sustenance. He says, He is the one who provides sustenance. Don't ever seek sustenance from anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ لَا يَمْلِكُونَ لَكُمْ رِزْقًا Those whom you are asking for sustenance besides Allah, they don't own your sustenance. فَبَتَغُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الرِّزْقًا وَعْبُدُوهُ وَاشْكُرُوا لَهُ إِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ Seek sustenance only from Allah and worship Him alone. Don't associate partners with Him. Be thankful, Allah says. Amazing. Be thankful for the sustenance we've provided you and the guidance we've given you in order to seek that particular sustenance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every form of benefit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us to be grateful that He has given us the parents we have and to be grateful to our parents, especially our mothers, for having given birth to us and looked after us when we were young. Amazing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not forget that. The biggest gratitude you need to show is to your mother. The biggest gratitude you need to show to your parents. Amazing. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Luqman. Allah has instructed you to do good to your parents. His mother or the mother of the human being has held this human with great difficulty after difficulty, hardship after hardship. The days went by and there were greater and greater hardships. And Allah says, and she gave birth in the greatest of hardship. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَامَيْنِ أَنِشْكُرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيْكَ The weaning in two years in order to thank me, Allah says, and to thank both your parents. May we be from amongst those who show gratitude to our parents. Obviously, wherever they have instructed us to do that, which is unreasonable and unacceptable, that is where we draw the line, but we will still respect them and honor them and obey them in everything else, inshallah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on them and to make us also parents who will be role models to our own children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit us all. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that when He has granted you knowledge and wisdom, you need to be thankful to Him. It is through gratitude that you will receive more knowledge and more wisdom. Listen to what He says in Surah Luqman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says right at the beginning, He says, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةَ أَنِشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ Indeed, we have given Luqman alayhi salam or Luqman the wise. We have given him wisdom so that he can be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your knowledge and your wisdom should lead you to be thankful. And you should be thankful in order to receive knowledge and wisdom. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who have both sides of that particular coin. Ameen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately after that expresses his independence. Do you know what he says? He says, وَمَن شَكَرَ 
فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ Whoever is going to be thankful will only be benefiting himself. Allah does not need your gratitude. You need to be grateful to Him. If you are grateful to Allah, you are doing yourself a favor. Praise belongs to Allah. Whether you praise Him or not, it still belongs to Him. Allahu Akbar. Allah says you must be grateful to Allah because if you are not grateful, He is independent. If you are going to be ungrateful, Allah is independent and He is praised anyway. Listen to what Allah says in Surah Isra. Allah says, يُسَبِّحُ لَهُ السَّمَاوَاتُ السَّبَعُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَمَنْ فِيهِنْ وَإِنْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ the seven heavens as well as the earth, the skies and everything in between. And all the creatures of Allah, they declare the praise of Allah. They are grateful to Allah. They praise and thank Allah and declare His greatness. But you don't understand it. The trees and the stones, the water, everything praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The clouds, the skies, all the creatures, the animals, what have you. They declare praise, but you do not comprehend the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by these creatures. When it comes to man, man is the one who finds himself ungrateful. Not even being able to utter the words, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah. All gratitude is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the greatest. These are the type of words we should be finding our tongues constantly wet with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to declare His greatness at all times. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us in this regard. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says thereafter, that do you know that even the fish is a very, very big gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fish is only there because the water came first. If there was no water, the fish would also die. You and I know that where there is a drought and the riverbeds have dried, you will find dead fish. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishes through the drought, not only by not giving one water, but at the same time by killing all the marine life that exists. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never punish us in that way. May He assist all those who are suffering drought and may He not test us with it. Believe me, the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are connected one after the other. If one is not there, there is a skittle effect where many others will be affected. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the gratitude. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us thereafter, what is the reward of gratitude? That is important. When you are grateful, what is the reward? And you, when you are ungrateful, what happens? Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ibrahim. وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ Allah has declared openly, your Rabb has declared openly, that if you are going to be grateful, He will give you increase. And if you are going to be ungrateful, He will overtake you with severe punishment, taking away even what He has given you. When Allah has given you hair that grows in a specific way, be thankful to Allah for that hair because if you are ungrateful, He might even take that away. Allahu Akbar. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken your hair away, in the case of those who are bald, for example, be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He hasn't taken your head away. Allahu Akbar. Really, some people, their whole mind will be gone. They will be suffering insanity completely. Allahu Akbar. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested you with something, look at those who are tested with something even more. That is Allah's plan. And that is why we are taught, Unzuru ila man huwa dunakum. When it comes to this material world, only look at those who are below you. Never stretch your eyes to look above you. No. When you don't have money, look at the one who doesn't even have a house. When you don't have a car, look at the one who doesn't even have a bicycle. When you don't have shoes, look at the one who doesn't even have feet. When you have one problem in your marriage, look at those who have 50. Allahu Akbar. When you have 50 problems in your marriage, which is more like it nowadays, people are complaining of every single thing. If you buy the yogurt, it's a problem. If you don't buy it, it's still a problem. So those are two problems with the same thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is instructing us to say, do you know what you should be doing? 
you should definitely be from amongst the one who is looking at those who have a greater difficulty. The problem with marriage, now that I mentioned it, let me go a little bit deeper in it. People compare their marriages with others who cosmetically appear to be happier, yet they are comparing themselves to you when you cosmetically appear to be happier. Allahu Akbar. So the world is comparing itself with one another, each one saying, look at how they're living. They're holding hands in public. Wallahi, those who hold hands in public are the very ones who don't get on in private. Allahu Akbar. So they've got to put up the show for everybody else. Those who really adore each other, they don't have to show the whole world. But those who don't get on, they've got to say, hey, hold my hand otherwise. And I'm sure you know the story. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Really. So it is the sign of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you think very carefully. And when you are grateful to Allah for what you have, make the most of your spouse. If Allah has given you a spouse, thank Allah for that spouse. And stop comparing. Because if you start comparing, it will end right at your grave. It will not stop and you will die a painful death full of ingratitude and full of ungratefulness. When you are ungrateful, you will miss another million things that your spouse has that are so positive and that others don't have. Because you are concentrating on five points that are bad, not realizing that there are another 500 that my eyes have been blinded because Allah has punished me because of my ingratitude. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us with peep, make us from amongst those really who can look at the positive elements and sides of our spouses and make amends insha'Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us resolve our problems. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells that to us that if you are to be grateful, I will grant you increase. And if you are to be ungrateful, I will snatch away even what I've given you. So if you want increase in anything, you need to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter tells us that gratitude is not only paying lip service, paying lip service to say, Ya Allah, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Then you're drinking, then you're going to the casinos, then you're involved in adultery, then you're not reading your salah, you're not giving your zakah. That's not gratitude. Allah says gratitude is the one who can obey the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together with the verbal gratitude. Allahu Akbar. And this is why in the Quran he says, those who do not associate partners with Allah, they are the ones who are grateful to Allah. Those who do not engage in shirk, they are the ones who are grateful to Allah for having given them the life that they have. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us regarding Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam in Surah An-Nahl. Inna Ibrahim kana ummah qanitan lillahi hanifan wa lam yaku minal mushrikeen shakiran li an'umih. Allah says Ibrahim himself was an ummah. He was a nation in one person. He was such a powerful leader that he is called a nation in one individual. Allah says, and indeed he was always from amongst those who did not engage in any form of shirk. He was standing firm on the straight path without associating partners with Allah. And that was the gratitude that he had for the gifts Allah had bestowed upon him. How many of us are going to be grateful to Allah in the same way? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from associating partners with him. Because those who do associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is a clear sign of ingratitude to the creator himself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us that there are certain people who promise Allah that, oh, I will be very thankful if you give me this. And I will be very thankful if you do this. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them, they suddenly forget that they had promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they would be thankful. Allah says for them is a severe punishment. For them, they should really take heed what has happened to the others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. That verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-A'raf. Allah says there are people who make dua. This is regarding pregnancy to say, Oh Allah, we will be very grateful if you give us a good child, a blessed child, a pious child, a decent child and so on. And when the child comes exactly how they want it, they suddenly begin to associate partners with Allah. Look at how partnership is mentioned as opposition to thankfulness. Allah says they promised to be grateful. Then they associated partners, which means they were not grateful. Allah says, 
Amazingly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah does not need them, nor does he need those whom they have associated as partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why whenever we promise Allah anything, it's our duty to fulfill it, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us thereafter that to, to prostrate, to find yourself in sajda, to fulfill your salah is part and parcel of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hijr. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكْ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ Declare the greatness of Allah, praise Him, and at the same time, find yourself always from amongst those who are prostrating. Make sure that you are fulfilling your salah. That salah is one of the biggest ways of showing your gratitude to your creator for what he has given you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter tells us, the example of, a powerful example of a person who is thankful and who has iman. Listen to what he says in Surah Al-A'raf. You know the examples of the Quran, they are understood by the ulama. It's important that we take lesson from them. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. وَالْبَلَدُ الطَّيِّبُ يَخْرُجُ نَبَاتُهُ بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِ وَالَّذِي خَبُثَ لَا يَخْرُجُ إِلَّا نَكِدًا كَذَلِكَ نُصَرِّفُ الْآيَاتِ لِقَوْمٍ يَشْكُرُونَ Indeed, that land that has, that land that is good, listen very carefully to the example, it will require a lot of attention. The land that is good, will produce crop by the will of Allah. But if the land itself is bad, nothing will come out of it except with great difficulty. That is the example for those who are thankful, Allah says. What this means, the land is being compared to our bodies, ourselves. And the plants are compared to the increase from the seed. When the seed goes into good land, the thankfulness and gratitude makes it grow so much. But when the seed goes into bad land, the ingratitude makes it stop there and you will not receive much goodness. Allah says, so when you are grateful, then the seed of gratitude will result in increase in the produce that you were grateful for. Allahu Akbar. And this is why when a person is grateful for the fruit they eat, they protect the seed and plant it. Allah says, we won't waste that. We will make sure it grows for you, inshallah. For as long as you are doing it, inshallah, with the right intentions for the sake of Allah, may He make us from those who can have produce that is edible, inshallah. And may He protect us from produce that is harmful for us. Really, we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us an insight into this example, where He says that the example of a person who is thankful is like the example of land that is good. When the seed goes in it, it grows. The seed is the thankfulness, the gratitude. So gratitude gives you increase. Whereas when, you, when your heart is filthy and dirty and you don't thank, it is similar to land that is bad. You can put 10 seeds in it or 100 seeds in it, it will grow nothing for you. Allahu Akbar. Allah says, when we give people, it's like a seed. If they want, they can either increase it by being thankful by Allah's will, or it can be a waste of time. They will just spoil it and have have wasted it in this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who can understand this powerful example in Surah Al-A'raf. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, He won't punish you if you are thankful. He will not punish you. Look, look at the words He uses. Amazing words Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses in Surah Al-Nisa. He says, مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ إِن شَكَرْتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ what is Allah going to achieve by punishing you if you believe and you are thankful? He won't punish you. He's achieving nothing, subhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He won't punish you if you believe and you are thankful. Notice how belief is connected to thankfulness because lack of belief is also connected to ingratitude. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Sulaiman alayhi salam. And the lesson is for all of us. Everything I've been given is a test from Allah. He wants to test me whether I am thankful or not. Listen to what Sulaiman alayhi salam is reported to have said in Surat An-Naml. In fact, we know he said this. He says, قَالَ هَذَا مِن فَضْلِ رَبِّي لِيَبْلُوَنِي أَأَشْكُرُ أَمْ أَكْفُرُ This, all this kingdom that Allah has given me and this power and might that Allah has given me is in order to test me. It is from the virtue of Allah to test me. Am I from those who are grateful? 
Or am I from those who show no gratitude at all? If we are from those who show no gratitude, Allah says, I don't need you, I don't need your gratitude. Everything else is praising me as it is. Whether you are praising or not, still the rest are praising. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us lesson from that. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses all of us as the children of Nuh. The children of Nuh alayhi salam. Why is that the case? The reason is we are the children of Adam. That is correct. But at the same time, at the time of Nuh and Noah, may peace be upon him, everyone was destroyed. Besides the few who were in the ark with him. And Allah says in the Quran, we gave, we gave the progeny of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam that extension. Nobody else had it. Which means the increase in the ummah was through Nuh himself and not from anyone else who was with him. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Isra, O people of the progeny of whom we saved in the ark of Noah. That's what Allah addresses us as. Allah says, Innahu kana abdan shakura. We'd like to remind you that he was a very, very grateful servant of ours. Which means your forefathers showed gratitude. Why don't you show gratitude as well? When he showed gratitude, he was saved when the whole globe was destroyed. If you show gratitude, you will also be saved when the calamity comes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us and grant us increase inshallah. And this is why it is important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention in the Quran and it is important for us to constantly think of the gifts of Allah. He says, Many places in the Quran he says, Remember the gift of Allah upon you. Remember the gift of Allah upon you when this happened. In another place he says, Remember the gift of Allah when that happened. There was a gift upon you. O children of Israel, O children of Jacob, may peace be upon him. Remember the gift of Allah upon you. He says that in the Quran. Amazing. And this is to teach us that we too need to look at the gifts of Allah upon us. Sometimes we were about to die in a close shave car accident and we survived. Armed robbery and alhamdulillah we survived. Allah is watching us. It's a test from Allah. Are you going to be grateful that we gave you that survival? Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson. Really. Sometimes we are so sick people have written us off and yet we are still alive. Allahu Akbar. It's a test. Allah gives us and he takes away from us. All of that is a test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why it is important that we make dua constantly. That Allah grant us the acceptance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the ability to thank him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this dua. We read it in tonight's verses in Taraweeh. And it is also mentioned of Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam in Surah An-Naml, where he made a dua, and we should all be making the same dua. Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amta alayya wa ala walidayya. O Allah, grant me the acceptance and ability to be able to thank you for the gifts you've bestowed upon me and my parents. وَأَنْ أَعْمَلَ صَالِحًا تَرْضَاهُ And part of that gratitude, Ya Allah, grant me the ability also to do good deeds that you will be pleased with because you have made me pleased. Allahu Akbar. رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about categories of people. Allah is pleased with them. They are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May we also be from amongst those, inshaAllah. And I'd like to end with something regarding paradise. Even in paradise, the people in paradise will be full of gratitude for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in Surah Al-A'raf regarding the people of Jannah. وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي هَدَانَا لِهَذَا وَمَا كُنَّا لِنَهْتَدِيَ لَأُولَا أَنْ هَدَانَ اللَّهِ We are so grateful to Allah. We are declaring all praise to Allah that He has guided us in such a way that we've arrived at this, meaning in Jannah. Had He not guided us, surely we would never have got to where we are. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us every form of guidance. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the call of the people in Jannah in Surah Yunus. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the call of the people of Jannah is as follows. 
their call in Jannah shall be Subhanaka Allahumma wa tahiyyatuhum fiha salam wa akhiru da'wahum anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen their call they will be declaring the praise of Allah when we call in the dunya we are asking for things when the call calls when the callers call in Jannah they will be declaring the praise of Allah, greeting everybody with peace. And one of their main statements will be, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Lord of the worlds. With that we end saying, wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad, subhanallah wa bihamdih, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.